Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. He is the creator of all things, and it's a blessing to be here with you today. We're continuing our discussion regarding family, building the godly family. That requires individuals who are family-focused and Christ-centered. And as some of you may know, I'm the senior pastor of the Greater Calvary Bible Church, and I'm the presiding bishop of the Family Life International Fellowship. My name is Sterling Lands, and I'm very pleased to be here with you today. I want to just get right into our lesson. Uh, a man can better understand his wife if he knows what her basic needs are. She, she needs the stability. She needs the direction of a spiritual leader. So right off the bat, we must have something going on that allows us to understand that this woman is depending on, upon us to lead. And we should lead with wisdom and understanding. Um, she needs to know that she's meeting vital needs in her husband's life and, and work that no other woman can meet. So in other words, she has to be the single focus, the only one. You are mine, and I'm yours. Let her, let her, let her, let her uh, know that she is special. Uh, she needs to see and hear that her husband cherishes her, that her husband delights in her as a person, cherishes her, cherish, that is providing to, to care for. Uh, she needs to know that her husband understands her by protecting her in areas of her limitations. So even if she's going in a direction that is detrimental to her, it's the husband's responsibility to get in front of her and stop her from doing that, which would ultimately hurt her. Uh, she needs to know that her husband enjoys setting aside quality time for intimate conversation with her, not just sex, but intimate conversation. She needs to know that her husband is aware of her presence, even, even when his mind is on other matters. She needs to see that her husband is making investments in her life that will expand and fulfill her world. Husbands probably should consider the following as primary principles to apply. Number one, remember that your wife is your partner by covenant. She's not your property. Treat her as your partner. Do not treat her as property. She's not just something you can pick up and throw away. Number two, do not expect your wife to be your wife and wage earner at the same time. Now, you've heard me speak about the bear killer and the bear cooker. You can't be a bear cooker and a bear killer at the same time. God is our source. God is our provider. God is not affected by the world's economy. So when a man thinks his wife has to go to work to help support the family, he's saying God is not big enough to provide for our needs. Then when she's unable to fulfill her role at home and the family life disintegrates, a man can ultimately blame God for the problems. Now there are indeed times and situations, let me get the record clear so you know what's really going, that there are really uh, times and situations when a woman may work outside the house. But these instances must be God prompted, not because of the need for some material possession. Now, in our materialistic society, more and more now you have two parents who are out trying to run down the material gods. And so they, they have to pay more money because they open up more accounts. And the more accounts, the more credit. And so in order to keep up with that, they both have to go to work. Unfortunately, the family suffers when that happens. Children suffer when that happens. 
and both the man and the woman suffers. Number three, do not think your business is none of your wife's business. And this is perhaps one of the dumbest things that men can do because it shows that they're still boys. It's so immature. You know, don't, 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 don't get in my business. Well, your wife is your business. So you have no business that is not her business. Some areas may require dialogue, but for the most part, husbands need desperately to communicate with their wives. If, if a husband is, is hurting, then she should, he should tell his wife. She should know. Then she can support him with her prayers and encouragement. If a husband is running into financial straits, she should know. So that at least she, she would know where to direct her prayers. Now look, this is important. When we get into this habit of saying that this is, don't get in my business or that's none of your business. I'm taking care of that. I got this. I know I don't need, I don't need any help in that. What you're really saying is that we're not really partners. You're my plaything. You're my maid. You're my cook. And you're the bearer of my children. But, but we're really not partners because partners are engaged in sharing to the point where they both can prosper. Okay, let me go on. Number four, you shall hold your wife's love by the same way you want her love. So look, 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 look. If you were wooing her in order to gain her, then don't stop wooing her once you got her. Please get this. The honeymoon is never over. Now, I know we hear people saying, well, the honeymoon's over. No, the honeymoon doesn't have to be over. You can honeymoon every day. Matter of fact, until you, until you bear it. Keep it exciting. Do things, you know. One hug and kiss in the morning may carry the husband through the day, but, but at least a second hug and a kiss will delight his wife and make her feel more secure and build her self-worth. She needs to know that She's not only valued and valuable in your life, but that your love for her is no less than it was when you were trying to get her to undress. I'm just saying. Number five, you shall make the building of your home your first business. Let me say it again. You shall make the building of your home your first business. Get it? Build the home first. Now, you, know, you do know that unless the Lord is in the middle of building that home, then the workers that labor, labor in vain. So that means if I'm going to make the, building my home my first business, I have to do that in cooperation with what God says. Husbands are to be home builders, not home destroyers. We don't need anybody destroying the house. The system is able to do that quite well. Number six, you shall cooperate with your wife in establishing family discipline. 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 You must discipline on one accord. Too many parents disagree on how to discipline, and they even argue over it in front of the children. So the children are not stupid because they're your children, so they have your same DNA, they have your genes, and so they know some of the same things uh, instinctively that you know. And they watch you and they understand when you're up and when you're down, when you're in and when you're out. So since that's the case, if they catch you arguing about some discipline issues, then they're going to play the two against each other. And before you know it, you have a conflict between mother and father. It's better to go to another room and settle a disagreement. And then discipline the child. Now, when I use the term discipline, I'm talking about preparing them to win, preparing them for victory. So this is not just where you are angry and you go taking it out on a child. No, that's not discipline. That's abuse, and you need to be locked up. In the end, the husband actually decides because the husband is the primary discipliner. The husband has a primary role of disciplining the children. I know that men turn it over to the wife and say, well, you know, whatever your mother says, that creates weak children. If the husband's role is to be the head of the house, 
then he should also be responsible and should see that as including disciplining the children. The wife may appeal his decision, but also she must yield to his, his decision because after all, they are partners and he is a senior partner. Now remember though, she's not without appeal because the husband is accountable before God for his decision, whether it's right or wrong. So she can always appeal to God and God will hear her prayer. Number seven, you shall enter your house with cheerfulness. If, if things got really out of shape on your work, on your job, at your office, in the trenches that you're digging, wherever you are, on the pole that you're working on, and you're really bent out of shape, leave the bent out of shape at the workplace. Do not bring the bent out of shape and throw it on your wife. The husband comes home from work after a particular trying day. His wife has been waiting for him to come home so she can pour his life, her life into him. And, 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 and then instead of dumping his burdens on his wife, the moment he walks in the door, he greets her cheerfully and positively. Look, look, I'm just glad to see you, girl. Matter of fact, you're the best thing that happened to me today. Then he tells her about the trials of the day. She's better able to listen and support him. But if you walk in throwing all that crap in her face, you're probably going to turn off everything. Timing is important. Timing. Timing is important. Look, the husband is not to unload all of the cares of the world at the doorstep or at the door threshold. And the wife is there to build him up and also to be built up by him. So it's a time to discuss what went on. You just don't walk in talking about it. Okay, number eight. You shall not let anyone criticize your wife to your face and get away with it. Neither your father, nor your mother, nor your brothers, nor your sister, nor your relatives, nor anybody else, or your friends. They can't be criticizing your wife in your face. I mean, that's your wife. It, it is simply not God's intent that a husband belittle his wife. You never put your wife down. Never belittle your wife. Yes, I know in a previous uh, conversation we had, we talked about a, a wife should never belittle a husband, but I'm not talking about the wife, I'm talking about the husband. Never belittle your wife, or you never allow anyone else to belittle her without taking a stand against it. If, uh, hopefully you don't have to go to blows, but if you have to go to blows, make sure you win. The husband and wife have a covenant relationship. And both of them need to support one another individually and together in whatever circumstances against all criticism. So, no, I'm not saying my wife is perfect, but I am saying she's my wife. I'm not saying that she doesn't make, not make, that she doesn't make any mistakes. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that she's my wife. And you don't have the right to be negative regarding my wife to me. Okay, number nine. Well, wait, let me just say one other thing about that. Even if your wife makes a mistake, the husband is not to correct her in front of other people. I mean, even if she blows it, I'm talking about like big time. You don't, you don't try to discipline your wife. She's not your child. She's your partner. So, so you don't do it in front of other people. You go to her privately and in love, and you speak to her privately and in love, but you're not in a chastising mode. Okay, number nine, you should not take your wife for granted. You should not take her for granted. Please hear this. Husbands expect their wives to be there when they come home with dinner ready and their clothes clean. Now, I know that some of you are saying, well, that's an old television model and it doesn't work. Look, it works. The fact that you're not doing it does not mean it doesn't work. You're just using that as an excuse for, for prostituting her. But the reality is that it works. Never forget to say, honey, that was a great meal. Honey, you really got things spick and span. I really appreciate the way you keep my clothes, and I really appreciate how you take care of these children. And I, I mean, I just think that you're great. Why would you say that? Because you're in the business of building up. She's going to build you up, but you should be in the building of business of building her up. And then number 10, remember your home to keep it holy. Keep your house holy. You validate your wife, affirm your wife, but keep 
your house holy. That is so critical. We don't do it enough. And so as a result, conflicts in marriages come up, and we don't know how to handle them. Now, by the way, we're going to deal with that in another session. Conflicts, conflicts in marriages are not bad. So when we talk about it, we're going to look at the pros and the cons. Without Christ, a husband has very little to offer his wife. But with Christ, he offers her praise. In Proverbs 31, 28, the word says, Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also, and he praises her. In Christ, he offers inspiration. In Proverbs 31, 29, the word says, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. You're the best, cream of the crop. He offers her in Christ, he offers understanding. 1 Corinthians 13, 7, the word says, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. In other words, I have not only a listening ear, but I'm listening with the intent of understanding. I want to understand you before I try to be understood by you. In Christ, the husband offers trust. The heart of a husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain, according to Proverbs 31, 11. In Christ, the husband offers consideration. Now get this. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, I'm going to read it to you, but we're going to talk about it. It says, likewise, you husbands, live considerately with your wives, bestowing honor on the woman as the weaker sex, since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, in order that your prayers may not be hindered. Now think about what we're saying here. I'm of the mind that we sometimes forget that God has charged men, charged us, to operate in this mode. So as the woman's protector, I have a responsibility to her. So when this word says, and look, we need to read it over and over, in the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat her with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. If you don't treat her as you should, your prayers will not be answered. That's where I want to leave. Your prayers won't be answered. If you don't treat that woman right, God's going to say, well, look, let me just shut down your phone line. You, don't have, you can't converse with me. Uh, in Christ, the, the husband offers his wife service. So in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, the word says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind let each of you Regard one another as more important than himself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interests of others. Who are the others we're talking about? Your wife. So in reality, you should be selfless toward her, treating her as your primary focus. Do nothing from a selfish perspective. Do nothing from selfishness. Do nothing from empty conceit. Be selfless toward her. And, and in Christ, the husband offers his wife forgiveness. Now, I already told you that without Christ, a husband has very little to offer her husband, if anything. Let me repeat that because I think I, I, I took the husband and wife and, and reversed it. Without Christ, a husband has very little to offer his wife. But with Christ, he offers her forgiveness. In Ephesians 4, verse 32, the word says... And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Who's the other? Who's the one another? The other is your wife. So be forgiving. And then last but not least, in Christ, the husband offers encouragement. Encouragement, particularly since we live in a time when there's so much discouragement. But in Christ... The husband offers her encouragement. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another 
and build up one another just as you also are doing. Encourage one another. Build up one another. Let me paraphrase it. Husbands, encourage your wife. Husbands, build up your wife. God has a way of making certain that what you sow is what you reap. And you'll sow some mighty sweet things if you follow God's plan. Well, that's all for today. We'll talk later at another session. God bless you. Let me pray before I walk away. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, who's our Christ, I thank you for this opportunity to share your truth to your people. Thank you for allowing your word to be a blessing in our lives. Lord, we want to be the men that you've called us to be. We want to be the husbands that you've called us to be. We want to be the fathers that you've called us to be. Enlighten us with your wisdom, your knowledge, and clear understanding that we can be all that we are designed to be by you for the cause of Jesus, who's our Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. God bless you.